Well, hello to all. Uh, I've enjoyed being with you uh, doing uh, sessions yesterday and uh, this morning has been equally as, uh, as wonderful. And so I wanted to share some information with you that's about uh, partnering with minority professional organizations to increase diversity. And let's see if I go down. Yeah, that's it. So minority professional organizations have long been committed to mentoring and nurturing the professional development of underrepresented students. And I'm sure that is not a secret to any of you in here. And uh, I have to come back to Boulder in about, oh, I guess a week, um, it's in August for a meeting of the Science and Technology uh, Centers of NSF, the director's meeting. And I know as a part of that, I'm going to hear that they've been trying to work with minority professional organizations, that they go to, you know, SACNIS or NSBE or others, and they pass out hundreds of flyers and, um, and the applications are distributed. But they seem to get zero or very little response. And so we want to talk about how we can change that response rate when we are, are approaching these uh, MPOs. Uh, so the key is you don't want to think recruitment when you go there. You're not there to recruit. Of course, you want to run, come back with stacks of applications and stuff. You want to increase your numbers. but. Let's begin with uh, developing a partnership with them, a true and genuine partnership, and then you'll see your numbers come up. All right, so in being with you this last, this last 24 or 36 hours or so, I've noticed one thing about this group. There's a lot of passion in here. There's a lot of passion, uh, and uh, you're going to need it. That's why I like this little sign. And as I was looking on the internet for signs about passion, there are, of course, a bunch that I couldn't put up here. But I really, I really love this one because it says, you're going to need it as you try to develop these, uh, these partnerships and increase the number of minority students who are involved in, um, in geoscience. And because of your passion, I know that you're not willing to continue to settle for these wimpy numbers that we've been getting, uh, these kind of average grades we've been getting in terms of uh, the number of Hispanic participants or the number of Native American, Indian, or African American participants in our programs. It's just not good enough. And that's one of the reasons we are here, to try to increase that, um, those numbers. All right, so when we put together our Center for uh, Remote Sensing of Ice Sheets, which is an NSF um, Science and Technology Center devoted to looking at the contribution of the melting ice sheets and, and, and uh, collapsing glaciers to sea level rise, then we uh, wanted to make a strong commitment to diversity. And so we wrote a vision statement for diversity that said we want it to become a national leader <laughs> in increasing diversity among polar scientists and engineers. That was our vision, all right? Now, people told us then when we wrote our proposal, 20% was a good number, a target goal. That would be very good if we could get to 20%. And uh, I actually remember during one of the first visits we had with NSF as they were trying to um, evaluate our proposal. We'd gotten pretty far along in the process. And uh, that number went up there 20% because, of course, I followed the advice of some of the other folks. But I had to say something at that time, and I said, well, when you come back a year from now, I'm hoping that the questions that you ask me are not, why did we not make our 20%? But how in the heck did you make 40%? You know, those are the kind of questions that I wanted to address. And as it turns out, our numbers with women are between 42% and 63%. And with minorities are between 66% and 89%. 
we really wanted front page numbers. We didn't want numbers we had to rationalize or hide in the report somewhere or justify. We wanted to throw those numbers right up on the front page. And so we did, we worked to do that. There is also, there's an article, oh, here it is. Um, very nice, uh, well done article. And Kelly Faulkner, who is the uh, who is the head of polar programs at NSF, has also wrote the lead article for this journal. But they were able, because of those numbers, were able to put an article in the um, this journal of international innovations about our work in cyber infrastructure, and remote remote locations that have offered us the opportunity to support a wide range of students to develop research programs in polar science. I printed this out for you if you want copies of it. It turned out not to be a really good copy uh, copies, but if you want a better copy, I have this, and maybe Stephanie will accommodate your request if you want better copies. I felt really good about that, so we got a nice article about that. Oops. So we put together uh, our Croesus Corley, uh, cor um, collaboration that involves not just Elizabeth City State University, but also Indiana University, uh, the University of Washington, Penn State, um, University of Kansas leads our consortium. And then we have some other partners like Los Alamos National Laboratory. And our minority professional organization is the Association of Computer and Information Science Engineering Departments at Minority Institutions, or ADME. And Dr. Andrea Lawrence is a past president of the organization. She'll be glad to share more information. Raise your hand, Dr. Lawrence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and let me show you how it works with us. Uh, that, well, in a, in a minute, let me hold that thought. There are lots of other organizations that uh, people might want to consider partnering with, depending on your particular STEM discipline. Uh, I've just put a few up here. I don't know them all, but I'm just encouraging you to explore this, um, this list of um, minority professional organizations to find which is appropriate for your project. You know, if you find that a lot of the scientists in your, um, on your project have chemistry backgrounds, then you want to think about Nobuche. Or if you find that they, a lot of them have uh, physics backgrounds, then you want to think about uh, the Society of Black Physicists or some, some other one. If they have uh, computational backgrounds or computer science, computer engineering backgrounds, then you want to think about ADME. All right. Now, what then? Well, here are some suggestions to try to make those interactions more profitable for you. Have that minority uh, professional organization nominate five or six students for a conference travel award from your organization. Right. You've got some student funds, right? Use them to identify some students. Uh, you can have that travel uh, scholarship in the name of your organization, the SOARS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> slash Nobuche Travel Award. Uh, you can specify your requirements. Uh, you can be specific about the classification of the students that you want to receive the award or what their GPA should be, uh, what's their major, what's their research interest. You can be very specific about that because this is your award. And believe me, they will not turn you down. Okay, They're looking for ways to support more students. Uh, while you, uh, now, uh, being that we are uh, overachievers or passionate about this, we don't we don't go with five or six students. We have forty <laughs> students uh, that we support to go to ADME, and that's a picture of one of them. And you see how we acknowledge them doing the luncheons. We give them all the, the increases, you know, gear and. Um, we, t we mentor them during the conference, attend sessions with them, and talk to them about uh, how our discipline area is relevant to what they're studying, and let them know about other, other opportunities within our organizations. And of course, we said we recognize them uh, doing the award.
forth. So we give them lots and lots of attention. But that's our core group. And then we follow up with them. You know, those are going to be the students that are showing up in the REU programs throughout the summer. Uh, those are going to be the students who are receiving um, support for them to go to, to uh, supercomputing because, you know, as volunteers and so forth go to supercomputing, they have to come up with additional money to support their travel. This is our group. This is the group that we, when we find out about an opportunity, that we contact them and say, we want you to apply for this. All right. Let me know when you submitted the application. Yes, I'll write a letter of recommendation for you. All right. Actively and aggressively supporting them. Another suggestion. Give this minority professional organization or my minority serving institution uh, a voice in constructing the partnership. A lot of times we try to list the things that we're going to do, you know, and, and when they don't work, we wonder why. Well, a lot of it is because there was no, they didn't have any input into the process. You know, we tried to do that in isolation, and you can't do that. So you need input from these minority professional organizations or M minority serving institutions to construct an honest and productive partnership. Uh, UNH, University of New Hampshire and the ECSU decided that we wanted to explore a partnership. And so we um, started out with a strategy session that I'll show you more about. and. Here's some images from some of the early partner uh, strategy sessions that we had. Uh, Eleanor uh, came in and she talked about it. Not only do we want a partnership, but of course being the passionate overachievers that we are, we wanted our partnership to be a national model for partnerships between <laughs> historically uh, minority serving institutions and historically white institutions. and so. Do you see on these slides that Cameron's showing and, and Eleanor's showing that the word model. And so we were looking to have our partnership uh, be a model for future interactions between um, minority serving institutions and um, white institutions. We had the people from other disciplines on our campus come in and meet with discipline, uh, faculty from disciplines, uh, other disciplines on their campus. So we started at the faculty level, uh, trying to collaborate. And then we moved up to the administration level, where we had our deans to meet together. We had our chances to come together and sign uh, a memorandum of understanding. And uh, we went to Goddard, and they actually hosted the signing ceremony and so forth. So it's uh, been it was it it's been uh, a work in progress. But these are some of the results that we've had. Uh, we had several um, proposals that we put out there. Not all of them were funded. Uh, we took our um, took our licks, licks together. Not all of them were led by ECSU. Not all of them were led by UNH. We kind of split the responsibility, writing and administering them. But in the process of uh, submitting these proposals and 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 implementing these proposals, we have involved hundreds of minority students and faculty, and we have a journal publication that is entitled, what else? A model of collaboration between historically black and historically white universities that was published in the Journal of Higher Education and Outreach Engagement. And there are copies of them on the table if you would like to see. It kind of documents the process we went through, which was not always clean or pretty. We had to have sometimes some very difficult conversations, uh, but it, and it's all documented in this article, how it worked, and how we continue to, uh, to be partners in uh, impacting these communities. Right, here's another suggestion. Now, some of these MPOs have student chapters. They have a student chapter structure. And they need seminars, lecturers, and so forth to, uh, as a part of their uh, chapter meetings, uh, 
we have um, uh, both a professional and a student chapter of the IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society on our campus. And so we always have seminars at least once a semester, and usually once during the summer. And we found this is a great opportunity to have the students meet face to face with these, um, with our uh, mm, speakers. And oftentimes it's not just the lecture, because a lot of times what they talk about goes over their head. It's the first time they've heard it. But that's okay. It's got to be a first time they hear it. But it's after the seminar that we see things start to happen. We see, uh, here's some of the seminars that we've had. People from, from uh, uh, that's James Harrington from uh, Goddard. And with him in the upper left-hand corner are um, Dr. Napoleon Paxton. He was an undergrad at the time. He now has his um, PhD and computer science, and he's uh, working with the Department of Defense. And then beside him is uh, Jerome Mitchell, who is working on his PhD in um, computer science at Indiana. He'll be finished in he'll be finished in May this year. So we were we, again we continue to help the students, and so Jerome wrote me uh, about hmm, I guess it was last December. And he said, okay, as a part of helping him, I asked him to report to me, you know, how things are going with him. And he said, hmm, Dr. Hayden, this is the last time <laughs> I've got to send you my grades because I am done with these classes. <laughs> right? He <laughs> just cheered <laughs> for him. Okay. But these are some of the lecturers and then um, and some of the other lecturers. And as you can see, we like cake. And so after the seminar, there's the cake and coffee period that I was getting to. And you see things start to happen. You see interactions between students who are attracted to the, come up and ask a few more questions about, you know, about what he was talking about. Because then again, they don't understand all of it. These are pretty heavy duty, high end lectures. And you also see things like the lower right hand corner down there where she's getting that business card from him. And they follow up. The important thing is following up with them. But you begin to, again, identify students who are potentially um, candidates for your REU program, candidates for your other support structures, okay? people that you can follow up with. And Danielle finished her master's degree up at uh, University of uh, UNC Charlotte as well as some of these other students. Kayaim, who's in the upper left-hand corner, uh, is now, he finished his master's up, and he's now a professor at Virginia Union University. Good. What you say? Yay. <laughs> it's that passion. I love it. Uh, another thing you could do is serve as a, a judge for student posters or oral presentations. It's mundane kind of work, but it gets you right up there with that student you know, face to face, you get an idea of what their research interest is and how it can be, you know, shaped to your particular uh, discipline area. Great idea. And here's an example of uh, Stephanie and Rich as they go through the process of mentoring students during the conference, uh, attending the sessions with them and sponsoring professional development seminars. This was a seminar, I think, on Gateway Develop, Gateway, our Gateway Institute process that he came to add me and spoke with the faculty about. And then, of course, he could not resist getting involved with the students. And that's wonderful. That's that passion, again, that we're looking for. Uh, this is a, a picture there from his uh, seminar. And up top, uh, this is uh, interaction with uh, Nobache. We were looking at for our uh, Science Gateway uh, uh, project that we're working on, we were looking for minority professional organizations that represent uh, both potential gateway users, which would be Nobache, chemistry community, very big, and designers, gateway designers, which would be the, um, the uh, ADME response. Okay, so here's some contact information for some of these MPOs. Um, 
This is the National Association of Black Geologists and Geophysicists. Um, I did the best I could to find out what their current information is and how you can contact them. Marilyn, I think you're affiliated with this. You want to say a word about Our next annual meeting is in September in Richland, Washington. Richland, Washington. Okay. Anybody else affiliated with this group? No, but I live in Richland. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the website so you can submit an abstract and present. Wonderful. Thank you. Submit an abstract and present. Consider these organizations as places where you can publish your research. Um, uh, they allow minority geologists and geophysicists to establish professional and intercompany relationships. Uh, they assist in the development of professional standards and practices. Um, this organization, the last uh, bullet, attracts individuals, universities, companies, and organizations interested in their outreach goals and our membership, uh, their membership as a source for employees. So they want you to get involved. And, th and I have one, a meeting for them um, in uh, Houston. Houston was last year. Houston was, okay, all right. All right, so and now here's ADME, the Association of Computer and Information Systems and Engineering Departments and Minority Institutions. You've already heard from Juan about some of the impact that these, that, that organization can have on the uh, future uh, PhDs in our, in our that field. They meet every year. Here's the set of officers. And of course, we have a past president with us if you want to talk with her about that. And they have challenges uh, that they uh, can address by partnering with you as well. And this is the National Society of Black Physicists. They were founded on the campus of Morgan State University in 1977. Um, society seeks to raise the general knowledge and appreciation of physics in the African American community. Contact information. Again, you can just kind of Google this and get, you know, this. Information. We will also be sending out the slides, so okay. you'll have access to all the slides. Good. Thank you. Um, they have a professional development committee. So if you want to conduct a professional development seminar during their conference, they actually have a structure for that. Uh, and so does Nobuchet as well. And they will be organizing a faculty workshop for HBCUs in November 2014. So that's an opportunity coming up to interact with them as well. And then there's NAM, the National Association of Mathematicians. Uh, we used to hold their, host their national office on our campus with Dr. Johnny Houston at one time. But uh, contact office uh, for them is now in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, okay, Dr. Woodson, Executive Secretary. And they hold a math fest. Uh, every year. This time it's going to be in, uh, in the fall and it's going to be on the campus of Morehouse University if you're interested in, uh, in trying to establish partnership with them. And then there's Nobuche. They're going to be in New Orleans in September. What do we talk about? We were talking about all the good gumbo and and yeah, okay, that's just, you know, in addition to <laughs> making a, building a partnership with them. It happens very nicely over a bowl of uh, crawfish etouffee, you know. <laughs> uh, they do want to establish educational partnerships with school districts, um, municipalities, businesses, industries, or other institutions and organizations in the public and private sector. So they're very open to that. We, um, last year, the Science Gateway Institute, we did have a, a um, put an ad in their journal, um, full page ad, and we also had a professional development workshop, and this year we're supporting students to go there. And so I've always been told that you should tell people what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so here's a summary. Uh, we want to consider ways to partner with these minority professional organizations um, through joint meetings or events or speakers. We want to give them a voice in constructing a partnership through strategy sessions or meeting with the board or, um, you know, make an effort. We want to consider ways to increase the scholarships and, and fellowship funds that these organizations have available. Name them in your honor if necessary, if you want to. But let's do this. Consider entry level and advanced summer research training programs based on team concept. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. We talked about the tier, you know, tiers. Um, consider academic year lecture programs on the MSI campus. Uh, you want to add the MPOs and proposals as partners with appropriate budgets. All right. So we don't want to just say, uh, I'm going to put in $5,000 to pay a faculty member on this campus to work with me. You want to think um, of ways that you can increase the infrastructure within the organization or the MPO and give them an appropriate budget and you will get the numbers that you want. Sponsor student participation in your, their events, conduct professional development seminars at their events, join the organization. All right. Encourage your colleagues to do the same. And when you do, what's possible? This is possible. 42 to 63 percent women, 66 to 89 percent minorities. All right. Plus, we have Croesus graduate students uh, now, minorities, the numbers went from 7 percent in year one to 40 percent currently. That's it for me. Oh. We also have a team now um, just funded by NSF to build on experiences that we have to send minority students into the field. So we have two students going to, two students who've been to Antarctica, Jerome, the guy up top, that smile is for real, mm -hmm. and uh, Teresa. Uh, and then we have three going to Norway for a glacial experience. Um, experience and two going to Juno for eight weeks uh, for a uh, another glacial exploration experience. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, we have time for one question. So, and but as we're looking for the question, I'll just say I'm the immediate PS chair of Nobuche, so of the executive board. So, if you want any additional information about that organization. Uh, you can see me, and I can help make some connections and stuff. So, Good. I did question. have oh, one question here. Um, I saw from your table that you have an awful lot of black students participating in your programs, but not very many Hispanic students. Is that just a reflection of the organizations you've partnered with so far? And do you have a plan for increasing Hispanic? Um, I do not. And that's one of my pet peeves. Uh, we talked about it in our group yesterday. That is, um, I know there are people out there doing wonderful things with Hispanic students, and I really my expertise is in the area of African American students and Native American Indian students. Yes. Hey, thanks. Uh, this is actually a comment slash question. So we were talking about how the geosciences has an image problem. Mm. And so I'm looking at your pictures here and I realize, so we set up an REU this year for um, <coughs> tribal colleges and we had an image problem because there's not a commons. So I wonder if one of our deliverables could be for those of us who have these photos to start compiling them. I, I wonder if you would be willing to share those in yeah. the commons. Yeah, sure. Um, because when we start talking about changing the image, these are the images we need. That's right. Um, That's so, true. You know. And these have appeared in a number of NSF publications as well. Right. And I would say that I've told these students going to Juno that if they come back with less than 500 pictures, <laughs> They'll never see another dad from me. <laughs> okay, so. And we're also arranging some blogging um, with, the, with them while they're there. Yeah. I don't want to delay us, but I just want to give us something to talk about in our breakout discussions, if possible. There's so many things to talk about. But I wanted to know, um, on the other side, you, I saw you saying that you met with various communities, the chancellor, the faculty, mm -hmm. did, did you have a group with the students meeting each other? And 
If so, why not? And how is that? How when we were building a the partnership, com- the partnership. How is the communities of the the student population meeting and getting to know one another important or not important in that um, development of a of a successful partnership? Okay. Uh, when we were building the partnership, we did start with the faculty, and with you know through the administration and funding agencies. But uh, as a result of the partnership, our students share. Uh, experiences through Watershed Watch program. Um, their students come down to our campus and our students go up to their campus every year. We, we trans, we uh, move our students back back and forth. I, I, was I, I want that point to get lost okay. in all the other stuff. I think it's important. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so one more time, let's thank both of our speakers.